Welcome to this tutorial on modeling Shoyang Park Plaza in Rhino using sub-B modeling techniques. We will begin by setting up a reference picture of the building, and then we will use sub-D modeling. Finally, we will use Grasshopper to create panels for our model. Even if you are new to Rhino, you will find this tutorial easy to follow and packed with useful tips. So grab your copy of Rhino, and let's get started. Download the reference picture in the description, and there is instruction how we can assign shortcuts for fastest modeling speed. To get started, we will create a cube with a side length of 140 meters. This will help us properly position our reference picture and ensure that our model scale. Once we have created our cube, we can use the move command to position it at the center of our model. To find the bottom center of the cube, we can hover over the two diagonal corners and use the midpoint as the starting point for the move command. Then, you can enter zero to place the cube at the origin. To import the reference picture, first go to the front view. Then, use the picture command to import it from the folder where you downloaded it, and select the front view of the building as your reference picture. Select two corners of the cube, and use this method to import the rest of the reference picture. Use the ZS shortcut to zoom in on a selected object. This will make it easier to focus on the object and work with it more closely. Now let's focus on the front part of the building. To do this, hide the rear reference picture and move the front part to the middle. To make it easier to work, lock all geometry by using the shortcut Ctrl plus L and reduce the transparency of the reference picture. Next, we will go to the front part of the building and trace over the reference picture using a NURBS curve. Make sure to select the Sub B Friendly option to Yes to ensure that our result will be Sub D when we extrude it. To fit the curve more accurately to the reference picture, drag the control points using the plane icon on the gimbal. Once we have aligned the control points, move the curve in the top view and extrude it. Then, scale it until it fits the reference picture. We will hide the box for now. Select the edge of the subdivision surface by holding down the control and shift keys. Use the scale 1D command to scale the edge in the Z direction, starting from the base. Align all the vertices by dragging them until they match the reference picture. Extrude the edge of the subdivision surface using the Extrude Sub-D command. If you get an unexpected result, you can change the extrude direction to either V or N to correct it. To flatten the extrude result, first select the edge of the subdivision surface. Then, use the Set Peat command and check only the UI option. Place the point when the result is flattened into it. We will insert an edge here. Use the previously assigned shortcut, Ctrl plus R, and make sure to check the offset mode to absolute. This will ensure that the offset distance is constant. Hold down the Ctrl and Shift keys, double click on one of the first subfaces to select it in a loop, and then press the Delete key to remove it. Hold down the Alt key and drag the selected sub-B face to create a copy. Next, we will use the bridge command to connect the sub-B faces back together. To smooth out the transitions on the edges, use the bevel tool. You can use the shortcut Ctrl plus B, or type the command on the command panel. Use the Insert Edge tool to add an edge. 
shortcut control plus R. Duplicate the edge using the dup edge command. While the curve is selected, run the close curve and planner surface commands to create a surface. Let's continue by applying the same process to the back side. This part is just a repeat of what we've already done, so you can do it on your own. Alright, let's insert the edge, and then scale it on one side using the gimbal. After that, we'll adjust some of the sub-D edges to get a smooth transition. For the remaining process, we will be repeating the same steps we've already done, such as moving edges, extruding and scaling. To save time, I will speed up the video and add some chill music. I will be back at the end to show you how to create panels using Grasshopper.
I used the same modeling techniques to model the second block. Now we're going to use Grasshopper to apply the pattern. First, we need to convert to NURBS surface. Use to NURBS command to convert the subbed model into NURBS surfaces and hide the original subbed model. Before we move on, let's make sure you have Lunchbox installed on your system. If you don't, here's what you need to do. Open the Package Manager in Rhino, search for Lunchbox, select it from the list of results, and press the Install button. After the installation is complete, make sure to restart Rhino to ensure that the changes take effect. Next, open a Grasshopper and reference the front surface using Surface Container. Let's put down a quad panel and adjust the grid size using the U and V values. Let's set 23 and 18. Now, take a look at what happens to the grid. Lunchbox internally treats the surface as an untrimmed surface. So first, we need to extract the curve and use it to trim the surface. And that will remove any panels outside the curve. All right, let's use the surface split component and feed the panels to the surface. But first, I need to pass the surface through a curved container because the surface split component doesn't accept the original surface, like this. Okay, the next step is to select the panels that are outside the split region. Here's our strategy. We'll check each corner point of the split panel and see if it's inside or outside the curve. If all the corner points are outside, we'll remove the panel. Now, using the discontinuity component, I'll get each vertex and check it using the point inside component. I'll feed the points to the point and the curve to the curve, which will give a result of 0, 1, or 2. 0 means the point is completely outside the curve. So we need to convert that to a Boolean value of true or false. I'll do that using a Boolean container, and then I'll use that pattern for the call pattern component to remove any points outside the region. Now that we've eliminated the points outside the curve, we can count the number of points in one branch using list length and compare it to the initial count using the quality component. If they match, it means the panel is within the curve. We can use this Boolean value to remove any panels that are outside the region. To achieve this, we will use the call pattern at the end. We've successfully removed the panels outside the region. Let's move on to the next step, which is making the frame. To do that, we need to join all of the panels into one and use the edge from direction to find the vertical and horizontal edges. This will allow us to create the pipe. To create panels on the remaining surfaces, we can use the explode command in Rhino to separate them into different surfaces. Then, we can reference those surfaces separately in Grasshopper.
To get a constant UV grid, we can rebuild the surface. Once that's done, we can use the previous method to create panels. In this step, we will extract the horizontal and vertical edges, but this time, we will use the explode component and the list item to choose the curves. After that, we can apply the previous node setup to create the pipes. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to access the final project files, consider becoming a Patreon and supporting my work at the same time. As a thank you, you'll get access to exclusive content and perks. See you in the next video.